This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. On my way to church, where the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 25, don't forsake the assembly of the saints. So we're commanded as believers to attend church. But today I want to talk to you all about God never needs a lot. He can use a little to change a lot. God can use a little to conquer a lot. When you think about God never uses a lot to accomplish his mission. First, he sent his only begotten son. Only begotten son. He didn't send an army. He didn't send a, a legion of angels. He sent his only begotten son to save the world. Think about Gideon fighting the Philistines, the mighty man of valor who was a farmer. God called him to lead an army. And the army started out with thousands to go against an enemy that had hundreds of thousands of troops or soldiers. By the time they got to the war, the army had dwindled down to a few hundred, going against hundreds of thousands of soldiers. Think about um, Jesus when he commissioned 12 disciples who later became apostles who changed the entire world. God never needs a lot. He can use a little to change a lot. So when you are at a church that is not a mega church, understand that mega church thing came about recently. Um, folks think the bigger your church is, the more holy your church is. And that's a lie from the pits of hell. Many of these mega churches are not teaching folks the true gospel. They're giving out sugar coated candy sermons to get people coming back. Because people, we live in a day and time where folks have itching ears and they want teachers that will itch and scratch those ears. Folks don't want to hear about sin or repentance or, you know, change your life. You, you can't keep doing those sinful ways because it's uncomfortable. And ultimately, folks who really don't want to change, who really don't want the God of the Bible, they won't come back to us hear a sermon talking about sin and repentance or putting Jesus first in your life. Here's a way you can definitely tell if your church is Christ-centered or self-centered. A Christ-centered church puts Jesus at the center of every teaching and preaching. A self-centered church puts Jesus as a precursor or a disclaimer, but the center of that gospel is you. What's in it for you? You become the center of the gospel. And that's a subject for another day. But in the beginning, in the, when the church was formed in the New Testament, folks worshiped in homes. They went from home to homes and worship and preach and sang hymns to the Lord and prayed. This new concept of these big buildings and these organizations has tainted the true gospel and the true church. See, oftentimes I've come to learn folks don't wanna to go to a church that's gonna hold you accountable, which means if you're small in number, if someone's not there, they will stick out like a sore thumb. So as a pastor or elder or a leader in church, you can reach out and say, hey, sister such and such or brother such and such, haven't seen you in a while. Is everything okay? That's accountability. Not that they're trying to lord over you, but they want to know if you're okay. But if you go to a mega church, you can creep in and creep out. You can miss Sundays, miss months, and no one will ever know you were not there, particularly if you're not involved in any ministry. So I'm not here to hate on mega churches. But understand this, God does not need a lot to conquer what he wants to conquer. God has always used the small or the minority to accomplish his mission. So understand that. So if you go to church and your church may not be a mega church and you have thousands of people in attendance, 
just be thankful that you are there. Because the Bible says this, wide is the gate that leads to destruction and many find it. And narrow is the gate that leads to life and very few find it. So if you find yourself amongst very few, count yourself as a chosen one. You have been chosen and set aside. Amen.